Hello. Okay, so thank you so much for joining us, uh, EJ, and as well as Sanad. Um, I think it's it's so nice to see uh, both of you and uh, your panel session, uh, your your uh, sharing sessions was already amazing, and I was so happy to have you both as a panel. Uh, so we are talking today about can entrepreneurship change the world? It's such a very very deep topic, and I'm so eager to hear what both of you have to say about it. Uh, but first up, uh, I thought that we can just go a little bit to the basics. Uh, let's just find out a little bit from each other because uh, being an entrepreneur, personally for me, I'm an entrepreneur and being an entrepreneur is not something that is like a very smooth sailing journey, right? It's like you have your ups and downs, you have uncertainties, uh, you have no idea what's coming up, you know, in, when you're running your own business. Um, so I just wanted to ask both of you, like, why did you start your journey as an entrepreneur? Why you chose to be an entrepreneur? We like to go first. To go first. <laughs> yeah, we can go first. Yeah. All right. So basically, I I think it's I started the journey for the for the wrong reasons. I think I started my journey because I wanted uh, to have more time, want to make more money, want to have a lot of freedom and do my own thing. Then uh, eventually, I realized it's it's not something that's it's like that smooth sailing. It's actually I need to spend more time. I make a lot less money to a point I won't reach like ten thousand. <laughs> Then what? Ten thousand? No, one hundred thousand worth of debt, and that was like a pretty scary thing. But eventually, when I see the impact that I could make on people, uh, whether it's my customers or the people that are hired, the the way that I can create jobs, and as it gets bigger and bigger, it becomes more more addictive, it becomes more meaningful. Then I discover more uh, better reasons that actually I could actually change my country, improve things around, improve the education system. Although I'm just a swimming school, but I feel it's it's uh, it's an interesting journey where I start to love it more and more along the way. Awesome, awesome. Okay, uh, I think I didn't really like start off with the intention to be an entrepreneur. Um, so Excellence started off as a project. Uh, if you look at our, our WhatsApp group, it's still called Excellence Project because it was uh, a project that we all started off as as um, students in schools, and um, you know we just wanted to see how. Um, we can teach other kids about how the human mind works, about how setting and achieving goals is so important. It just started off as a project first. But eventually, as we kept on going, it, it had to formalize itself into a startup. It had to formalize itself into a social enterprise. Um, and then you learn things that, like, like I, I believe for the four of us, it was, it was very much from scratch because we had no prior experience um, as entrepreneurs. But more importantly, we were kids in school. <laughs> so we literally had no clue what exactly running a business was. A lot of times it was doing it for a couple of months or a couple of years and then realize, oh, this is what a business actually is. Or this is what an entrepreneur actually is. So it's a very new thing for us. Um, but later as the four of us are slowly moving on into our own um, spin-off ventures that we're doing right now, uh, now like it's, we're beginning to understand what exactly um, entrepreneurship is, what are the things that we need to do, um, how do you, you know, build teams, how do you build infrastructure, these are things that we learned from the from the last seven years of, of running things because of our mentors and because of the people who've been helping us out as well. I, I think that's very fascinating, listening from EJ to Sana, like from EJ, uh, listening that you ventured into it and then figure out that, oops, this is not the right reasons and eventually finding out what is it that you really want to do as an entrepreneur. And for Sana, it's like not knowing what's entrepreneurship, diving into it and then figuring out what is it uh, all about entrepreneurship and how do you really excel. Really, it's, it's really uh, fascinating to listen to two different perspectives as well. And, and talking about this whole field of entrepreneurship, um, I think both of you wouldn't be here if not for this topic where entrepreneurship can change the world. And I just want to hear your thoughts on this because this is what we could claim that entrepreneurship can change the world. But how much do you believe that entrepreneurship can change the world? What's your both take on this? Um, for me, I, I feel uh, it's an impact that I slowly see it gets bigger and bigger. At first, it's just small. I say, I'm just a swimming coach. I'm just teaching swimming. What can I do? But eventually, as I touch more and more, more students, I start to realize that I'm actually building their confidence. I've seen people who are like 71 years old, 
Uh, and after learning swimming, he said, oh, thanks for that. I finally cured my fear. Now I want to go for rock climbing. It's like 70 wow. old auntie, you know? It's like, wow. Yeah, I've, I've seen people who are like accountants and actuaries where they are very, really scared of taking risks due to the nature of their job. But eventually, once they learn swimming, they realize, oh, what else is like a limitation in my life? What else that I think that I'm actually afraid of? That actually, is, is, the fear is not real. It's just something that I imagine it. But once you learn the right techniques with the right people, you can actually get it really easily. So I, I start to feel that there's a lot of things being impacted, either from my customers or even from, from my staff that I feel. I remember uh, Emma. Emma is currently our lead in customer service. Before that, I remember her first day, she's like, oh, I don't want to talk to customers. I'm an introvert. Uh, I, her English is, wasn't even that good, you know? Then, then she was like, oh, I, I cannot. I'm very shy and I'm bad in English. I'll say the wrong things. And we keep creating a, a platform for her to keep failing and keep trying. And now she's like the lead of our customer service. So I find that this is really, really uh, interesting. It's uh, very meaningful in in, the, in small scale. But on the, on the bigger picture, it's also, for example, uh, the, the more tax that I pay every year, I start to say, oh, wow, that's, I think the road, the tree, <laughs> I think I contribute a little bit more to that. That's why I was just a little bit, but now as I pay more and more, it's like, oh, that's quite a significant amount. That, that could actually pay for a lot of things, you know. So, and eventually now it's like not only creating jobs, but I'm creating entrepreneurs that create creates jobs. And that's really meaningful. And those entrepreneurs continue to not just uh, make money for themselves, they create jobs for other people. They actually did charity that help other people as well. And they create meaning. Like for example, uh, our this uh, ATAC. ATAC is one of our first uh, entrepreneurs that we have uh, built uh, on the project. And they actually help people to go for a virtual, uh, virtual team building. And they help many mm -hmm. colleagues who are really shy at talking to people. Then now they become more outspoken because of this job, this part-time job that's like we've done virtually. So. so it's like, wow, very mind-blowing. This is something that that's, that's, I feel it changed the world somehow, but it, it doesn't look like it's like a big movement. It's like the little butterfly effect. Thank you so much, EJ. Sometimes we, we, we think that it's small differences, but we don't know how it's going to impact in a very ripple effect uh, towards the, the people that we guide and what goes on after this. Uh, so we're talking about can entrepreneurship change the world? And we are actually uh, just listening to EJ, Salad and Joyce on uh, what is their take? what is their take on this particular question? Can entrepreneurship change the world? I would like to hear what, what Sanat has to say about this. All right. Um, okay, I think um, this actually comes from our mentor as well when he first mentioned to us. Um, and it's something we are learning as well. Um, more than entrepreneurship, it is people with the entrepreneurship mindset that will end up changing a lot of things. Um, and, 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 and why do we say that? Was because I think there's so much that you learn from, from being an entrepreneur, uh, working on a venture and working on a project. Um, you learn things like how do you handle failures, you learn things like how do you work with people, you learn things like how do you uh, like push a project from its ideation stage all the way up to the end of it, and how do you tackle the many curveballs that come inside of it. Um, you learn things like, surprisingly for us as well, uh, you learn things like you learn when to step down and when to let other people lead, all these kind of things are things that happen when you work on a venture, when you work on um, something entrepreneurial in that sense. And what we're trying to do here in essence is we're trying to like stimulate that experience and give it to kids who are 10 years old, 11 years old, 12 years old, 13, 14, 15 years old. Let them do that while they're still in school and, and let them learn that whole thing because it really develops that ability to think critically. It really develops that ability to work in teams. And like what that does for people is if you have teams like this, where people have that entrepreneurial mindset um, and they can learn to work with each other, they can learn to um, foster creativity, they can learn to push an idea in that sense uh, very well. Uh, you just need that idea that can change the world. And if you have that idea and if you have the right infrastructure for, and the right kind of people to work on it, any idea is possible in that sense. We're talking about things like um, if somebody comes up to us and says, hey, here's the next big alternative energy idea um, that is going to take over the fossil fuel industry entirely and it's going to change things in that sense. Right now, if a kid comes and tells us that, do we have that, that team and that resource to push that idea through? And entrepreneurship can actually give you that, that team and that infrastructure for when innovative ideas can come. Uh, and and, and what, what we're trying to do here in essence is 
if we can give them, if we can stimulate all of these this, this resources, if we can give youngsters all of these things and foster these things, we just have to wait for those real game-changing youngsters to come. And that's how we're gonna we're gonna we, how, that's how entrepreneurship I believe is gonna change the world. It's 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 a new wave of education through project-based learning. Uh, and you know we've we've gotten the chance to work with different partners who are doing um, different things. I think um, when we first started, we had a lot of our corporate partners who came on board to do experiential learning sessions for people like EJ, people like Ramya and Joyce, and all of you guys who've been watching Essence grow in a way. You know. Uh, we bring students to your places, we teach them things, we, 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 we get them into that mindset. And now we're working with partners like Wharton Interactive in, 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 um, in the US where they do um, augmented reality courses for youngsters and so on. So like all of these education resources are there and entrepreneurship is what's going to bring all of this together and like foster that change. Into it. So that's that's how uh, I, I, I see it becoming a very important thing in the, the future landscape as well. Yeah, that, that's that's really amazing. Looking at how the young can create a change, uh, that that's something that we all look forward to. And and let's talk uh, to Joyce a little bit. You have years of experiences in this field, being an entrepreneur. So I would like to listen to you on on what do you think the role of entrepreneurship actually plays in changing and making a difference in this world today. Um, for me, like when I was hearing Sanat, you know, they talk about uh, building the young and they have that uh, passion, they have that innovation, you know, that kind of thing. And EJ is, uh, you know, building entrepreneurs at his office, you know, from his business and things like that. Then I look at myself and say, am I really keen on it? Can I really do it? And I think there are a lot of entrepreneurs out there who are not as uh, creative as uh, Sanat or even in, in, in EJ's case and things like that, can they really change the world? And so in my part, I, I realized that I can only uh, change myself in a way because based on what my mentor uh, has guided me on, you know, building a social enterprise and things like that, I, I don't see myself growing too big, you know, like how ascendance is growing, things like that. But I see myself growing to um, at least how they say, uh, give my time and my resources to build the young. So you, it is like every everybody's effort makes a difference. So what I look at, what can I do to help build this future that we are looking for and looking at and things like that. So in my case, I, I do spend time with the young. I do put in the resources and things like that. And hopefully they, and I share my experiences and things like that. So I think every one of us, even they are not entrepreneur, they can be a professional. They can actually help uh, change the world by sharing their experiences or even just supporting the young, supporting the ideas that they actually, uh, you know, um, put it out there and say, you know, they want to try this. Uh, we do not really know whether it be successful or not, but just give them the support and see where it goes and if they need any help we'll be there for them i think that's that's what my take on uh, entrepreneurship and uh, giving back and all these things lah. Mm. thank you thank you for being very truthful Joyce. i mean i mean it takes a lot to say this the reason being is because when you're not the main players or you're not the one who's coming up with the creative stuffs what happens to all the other entrepreneurs all the other industries right thank you so much yes. for being truthful about that Joyce. so um let's go a little bit in depth uh, what I mean by that is I want to hear more about the challenges space. Like what, as an entrepreneur, there is many different challenges and all three of you all come from different industries. So let's hear a little bit about what is the, the any incidences, any examples that comes to your mind about when it, it really hit you. But the thought that comes back to you, all three of you is, I don't want to give up. I still want to go on. I still want to take this path of being an entrepreneur. So is there any incidents that you feel that you got hit quite bad, but um, your your thought process is, no, I'm still going to do this? For me, it's a, a lot of uh, challenges. Like, uh, <laughs> And I, I think my, my, my son just asked me yesterday, what do you think about running a business? Huh? Do you think should I, I should start <laughs> a business? <laughs> I said, is it easy? I said, definitely it's not easy. But if you, if you like challenges, if you like problems to solve them, then, then entrepreneurship is for you. you know? So it's not for everybody, but it's it's a, a path with a lot, a lot of problems. And 
And for me, there are many, many times, uh, I think at the earlier stage, it's like I, I doubt myself, whether am I doing the right thing, especially for many years, my mom keep asking me, where are you going back to IBM? Huh? Why are you making so little money doing this? Why, why are you being a swing coach for so long? You know? So it, it's like, it takes a lot of uh, courage, takes a lot of uh, belief and maybe some of delusion a little bit as well, like believing in your vision so strongly, even uh, a lot of people cannot see it. So I think it just takes time and also a lot of strategy, a lot of uh, hard work to put into in, in it. Um, so I suddenly lost my, my train of thought. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you're asking about is it uh is that time yeah, like any... to give up? Yeah. yeah so like many times especially the pandemic that was one of the biggest like, biggest thing because the easiest is to just okay let's just let go of everybody just close down the business then when things really get stable then it start again so that was like that would be like the easiest thing to do as an entrepreneur then we, we stop the bleeding immediately yeah. but then i went into that crazy thing of okay let's get a bank loan which i never get before and it's like hundreds of thousands of bank loan. And it's like, oh, if I don't make it out of this pandemic, then I'm gonna go bankrupt. Really. It's like, can it can be like next year I can become bankrupt. Really, you know? So it was like a crazy risk that I've taken to take care of the to take the loan and take care of our people to keep the business running. So, but I think what really inspires me is uh, at this moment it will be the people around me that I've hired that have uh, followed me through. Uh, the difficult times who actually make this whole thing possible so i feel it's like it's not just a, a vision really it's also a responsibility as well once you get bigger it's not just okay i don't want to do this anymore so it's not just something that i don't like to do that i just shut off off button one day yeah? like so to me now it's like a responsibility especially like this year we've hit like a hundred uh, employees already so it's like whoa mm-hmm. hundred that's like three digits eh? i've never even imagine that that is possible so so uh, yeah many many times of giving up but i think what draws me back is every year is different reason maybe the first few years is just uh maybe i want to believe in my own ideas that i can actually make it the next few years uh i think there was a year very challenging where I, first time i get into a sports center but before that i was teaching freelance in a condo then we get into the sports center the first year itself my father-in-law had an accident then he, he suddenly got paralyzed and i had to like make a decision to take care of him or not to take care of him so in the end i made a decision to take care of him and it, i spent a lot of money and it was my first year of growing so in the end it's just like oh am i should i still do this or should i just go to work and get a, a stable income so end of the day like i would say no probably i can be more creative find a better way through this uh, uh this platform and uh, create more win-wins for people to have jobs for customers to enjoy the service for me to take care of my final law Every year, it's, it's, a, it's a different reason to keep me going. But this year, I think it's the people that, that follow me through and, and persist together with me during the pandemic. So this year, that will be my reason. That's amazing. That's, that's so, so awesome to hear, hear that story, Jay. Um, I, think for us, I think all three of us would collectively share the pandemic story because um, it, it was a bad effect for all of us. But for Ascendance, it was actually a very important time. Um, mainly because, uh, so our work before that was very, very involved into going to schools and doing the work. So I remember like, uh, you know, me and, and, and Kira, one of our co-founders, she just drive around every school in Slango and, 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 and around Slango and we go and do programs there and we work with them. And when the pandemic came, it's literally a halt to all of our work. That means there is literally nothing we can do because there is no access to any school or no access to any students we can't do any of our programs we can't meet any of the the the, the requirements that we need to meet for the work that we're doing and so on and we were just so down about it you know for the first one two weeks we were just like what are we going to do how are we going to um, go online and everything and um, i remember at that time um, we were all neighbors so we used to just um, sit down and just make calls and talk to people and ask them hey you know we have this online event do you want to join this so we had this online series do you want to subscribe to it we just kept on doing that again and again and that was the only thing at that time we were doing because we were still figuring out what to do but one thing that our mentor always told us is you must always listen to your audience and listen to youngsters and the students in school what do they actually want now remember one of the kids coming and telling us giving us this idea where he was like hey you guys should do a talent show an online talent show and in our heads i can i can see all of us like what kind of nonsense idea is this who would watch a talent show why would we do something like this but um one of our founders madura was very 
she was saying that there's something about this I'll show if somebody's asking us this thing that means there's a reason why this kid's asking this thing so let's push through it nobody wanted to do it but we did that and we we, we hosted this online talent show and the next thing you know students from every state in Malaysia started coming in we had entries from students from every single state in Malaysia the teachers all started coming together everyone was signed signed to ask us hey um, how do i sign up for this um can my can my students participate in this and the next thing you know we're running a big national level event online in the pandemic and it's a talent show and it makes no sense at all but that's that sort of opened up our mind was to say that hey with the internet you don't have to limit yourself to just the schools in Slango or just the schools in, in whichever state that, that you're in. You can look at a much more global audience. You can look at a much more international audience in that sense. And from that, SNN spinned off into so many different online events, online shows. Now we have web series, we have conferences, we have um, comedy sketches that we do, we have um, you know radio shows that we do. Uh, we work with different people to come up with like specific content on financial literacy. We work with people to come on content on entrepreneurship. Uh, we get C-suite executives to come and, and coach kids as well. All of these things spinned off because of that one talent show idea that we thought was the, was the greatest idea ever. But um, that's the, and, and that's that's how it, that's how uh, it's been for SNS for the longest time. It's the most unexpected ideas that we will think will never work at all. But, um, you know, but the crazy thing about entrepreneurs and all of us uh, in this panel have done this before is if we think an idea is crazy enough, we will follow through with the idea. Like this 48 hour summit, it's a very crazy idea to think about it, but we follow through with it and we get it done because um, somehow or other, if you put your heart and soul into something and the, the worst case scenario is you learn something and something else branches out from it. And I think that's that's very nice, and that's that's one of the experiences that I personally think um, shaped Essence into what it is, along with a lot of people who came and helped us and supported us uh, along the way as well. So am I supposed to go next, Ramya? <laughs> yes, go ahead, Joyce. Go ahead. We would love to listen to. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's it's but, ups and downs. Yeah. So what is what is sometimes the down moments that you have faced, but you you still decided that, you know, it's still going to keep, I'm still going to keep going, you're not going to give up. Uh, I think after listening to Sana, you know, what I do is pretty lame, but I think I just no, share one. No, guys, you, you're amazing. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I think one of the things that, that uh, most of the times that makes me want to give up is actually the pressure. You know, the pressure of the work, the pressure of the people, the client and everything. And then uh, when the pressure gets too much or when I don't know how to handle, usually I go back to my mentor. And that's where the environment really helps a lot. Uh, one, they actually uh, help you to refocus back on actually what is important. And also to, to look into like, hey, you know, maybe you want to do something different. You have been doing this for years. You know, it can get a bit boring. So would you like to, you know, just move into a different angle? Can you look into a different thing? Can you share more of your experiences and things like that? So this way, I feel that with that, that environment that I have and, uh, you know, linking with the, the business incubator ED ideas, we have so many young entrepreneurs and they came up with so amazing ideas. And um, that, that actually, in a way, it kept me going because uh, you can say accounts is a pretty boring job. It looks like the same and things like that. And when you go into consultancy, it's a bit different. But uh, when I work with the young and they, they, when, you know, somebody, I think our mentor actually uh, asked us, you know, why don't you do classes for, uh, you know, graduates and things like that? Because one of the things that we, we notice about graduates is that they have the knowledge, but they don't really know how to put it into practice, you know. So what they, they then we came up with uh, a team of us, uh, Madura and Vishnu, we came up with a workshop that actually try to uh, provide a, a very, um, how do I say, a more practical environment. You know, how do you practice accounting? How do you handle issues? How do you uh, handle your bosses? How do you handle your team and things like that? How do you communicate with people? Okay, but it didn't start off like that. It started off with very simple, you know, just a normal workshop. I share my experiences, everybody share their experiences. But then, then we realized that it's not really so impactful. And um, then slowly it evolved into something whereby it's like a kind of like a stimulation kind of thing that, okay, you're an accountant, what do you do? 
that kind of thing. So people get more excited about it. So times at times when I, I want to give up and I look at it like, okay, so if I go back to a nine to five job, it'll be a nine to five job. But when I'm in this environment, it really like a very entrepreneurial environment. You get to do new things. Uh, you get to see amazing things. I may not be involved in it. I may not be the one developing it, but I get to actually see it and enjoy. Uh, you know, the, the things that um, the young enjoy doing actually, because sometimes I get pulled in and then you see, oh, okay, they are doing these fun things. Let's, let's just join in and things like that. So I think, um, yeah, I think in that sense, like any the times, there are plenty of times I want to give up. You know, sometimes you just feel like, ah, oh, this, can I just not do this anymore and things like that? But when I see uh, the young keep going, you know, like, okay, <laughs> let's let's try a more round and see how it goes. Something like that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you to all of you. I, I think all three of you mentioned different points, right? So from Joy saying about um, the pressure of the business itself and uh, from EJ, the circumstances that happens around you from, you know, it could be family it could be what hap what's happening around you and as well as sun is like the pandemic is, is something that happened globally so uh it's three different three different challenges but i'm pretty sure as an entrepreneur for all of you who's listening out there and three of you can vouch for this we all have experienced all three in, <laughs> at, 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 a, at a, a certain point of time right so sometimes um it is a lot for us to handle, but I really, really admire the three of you for uh, still keeping it together and saying that we will not, you know, it's not going to be something that is for the end of the world, but we're going to keep going. Um, so I, I really um, enjoyed uh, listening to all your uh, sharing sessions earlier of the day, and as well as really looking into the three of you all doing interesting things for the community. You have all equally given your time for the younger generations or for your teammates and really spending the time to groom them and see what best of experiences and resources you can give back but i actually have a question the reason being is because as a business that you are running we are looking at having profits you know we want to we want to build the profits we want to increase our revenues we want to look at those kind of elements we have to keep running our business but at the same time we are committing to a whole different element here uh with regards to the people building the people and and all of this so how do you strike the right balance between both of it still building your business but still changing the community inspiring you, the people around you I think for me, I will go with the percentage. Like if if the percentage is too high, the cost is mm -hmm. too high, um, we, then we can't really afford it. Then that's there'll be too much of expense. It become too much of a burden. Then it's not sustainable. So I think if the the thing that we give back is a percentage of our time or resources, money, effort, mm -hmm. uh, it's a good balance. Then eventually, it will always. Uh, um, it be a meaningful thing for you that we can continue to keep sustaining. Like for example, um, one of the things that we do is uh, instead of selling more rubbers, like for board, for swimming board, or the fins for students to use, uh, definitely if every student now we I think we have about seven eight hundred students. If every single student buys a fin, uh, I make a lot of money you know, by doing that. But then we were thinking so that there'll be a lot of trash because. A lot yes. of kids, they don't need the, that board forever. They just need it during the early time. They don't need the yeah. fin forever because after a little while, they will they grow in size very fast. Yeah. There's something that parents will, will, can feel it every year. The fit size go, go bigger and bigger to buy new shoes. Eh? So the same goes for fin as well. So every day, there'll be a lot of trash. So it's thinking, okay, let's, let's do something that's more uh, noble. It's subtle. We don't even like advertise it. We just buy fins and buy the boards and just leave it for students to share. So anybody can just take it and use it when there's classes. So we lose more money on the retail side, but at the same time, the retail business is not a big percentage. It's probably less than 10% of my business and I feel I can afford to lose that. It's, it doesn't make business sense in that way because no one would kind of like thank you for it. <laughs> you just, usually you just take, take for granted very easily, you know, because, oh, it's there, you're supposed to have it. But, but then again, as long as you, you do it and you, you find that it's going to help the world a little bit, and no matter how small it is, it's like uh, recycling. 
So if, if you feel like recycling is good for you and every time you, you, you use one less straw, so this is my version of using one less rubber and it gets pretty big when the, 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 the more students I have, then the impact becomes really big. So I think it's, as long as it's affordable and we have to keep trying to allocate, I said 10% is a very good number to always try. And if possible, creatively add uh, things that are impactful for can be the environment, can be for society, charity. At the same time, find a way to benefit yourself as well. It could be for, for branding. It can be for uh, inspiring your team members to, to do good. You know, all these small, small things that you can incorporate together, then it makes sense to have multiple objectives in, in one action. So that, that'll be my take on that. Mm -hmm. I think on the side, we're still learning how to do this um, with regards to striking a good balance. But I think like, one of the things that Essence does quite well, I would say, is, um, is to look at how everything adds value to society. Um, and it's not just, see, one part of it, yes, it's the product, uh, like whatever product you're selling to people, uh, is it adding value to the students or not? So like for us, we have the teenageentrepreneur.com, which is our online platform that we're selling right now. And um, this one, we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are changing the content, we're updating it, we're trying to make it more relevant, more accessible, more um, interactive for audiences to use in that sense. And that's one side of it. But um, a lot of the things that we do uh, is also developing skills of the people who are working with us in that sense. Um, there are some people who work with us who um, you know, we provide we provide them with a small amount of allowances for them to move around and do things in that sense. Uh, some of them are entrepreneurs who have their own ventures and they are coming to work with Essence on certain projects that we run. But in a way, what we're doing is we're adding value by helping them uplift their skills, helping them uplift their ability to, to, to get things done in that sense. And that sorts of helps them out in whatever other ventures that they're going to do out there as well. Um, one of the things that <clears throat> like we we've, we've been we've, we've modeled it based off of ET ideas which is the social business incubator platform that we came out from is using ascendance as a platform and as a tool for people to develop their own personal ventures and their own personal skills in that sense and that way everybody benefits because they all learn the right kind of things that they need and when they go out there when they have their own ventures that becomes their source of income that helps them to you know grow on their own projects and so on as well but what we've seen very interestingly happen is when we have building people as our focus and when we have um you know the development of the community is our focus naturally a certain starts making profit because of that um you see other companies you see other foundations you see other uh corporate partners who come on board and say hey can i put x amount of money into this so that um this platform runs and it reaches out to this many people or can 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 um you know we recently got a, a project with a fortune 500 company every denison and they came in and said hey can you do a big project for 3600 students all across malaysia and they pump in a certain amount of money inside so that we can go and do the work that we need to do but the reason why that's happening is because of our focus not being on making money alone, but our focus being on how can I add value to the community. And sometimes adding value to the community will come from your product, will come from the service that you sell. But if that is if that, that service that you sell or the product that you're selling is adding that value to the community, naturally people will buy into that much more. And that's something that I've seen personally happen in Ascendance uh, where the more we keep producing the results, the more we keep, um, you know, building people in that sense. Naturally, there are people coming on board, there are organizations coming on board, there are parents who actually come on board and come and tell us, hey, can you help my kid with this? Or can you help a group of my kids with this in that sense? So Ascendance is, is in a way a platform to build all of these things. But our focus has never been to um, like make a lot of money alone. Our focus has been adding value to society. And the the stakeholders that can see this very well, they end up putting in the money into essence so that we can go and do the work that we want to do. So that's that's just like one way based on it. But we're still learning much. We, we still have a long way to go with regards to we're even thinking about formalizing um the teenageentrepreneur.com into a startup of its own uh that provides digital content for uh, students on entrepreneurship education and financial literacy and so on. So that will sort of take time for us to develop and so on. Um, we, we have other ventures that we are now looking into 
um, scaling up or bringing in the VCs and so on as well. And that's why we've been, we've been traveling a lot recently, talking to different people. So we're still learning how to strike the balance properly. But this is what I've seen so far. It is to have that adding value as the core principle and that and if people and organizations can buy into that then naturally you also start making profit from that as well yes Joyce. <laughs> i think i'm going to combine both <laughs> In a way, for example um you know i like what ej said about giving a certain percentage because uh through my experience working with uh business owners startups and things like that um when there is uh, money is involved there's always a trigger point for each person mm -hmm. or for each business okay so there is a trigger point what it means is that uh when when we when see that your money is not sufficient you will get jittery you will focus will run towards like oh do i have enough to pay the rent do i have enough to pay for the business do i have enough to pay for the employees and things like that so uh throughout uh this this my journey to be a social enterprise my business to be a social enterprise my mentor actually guided us to actually start building reserves meaning that we have reserve and you can see from the pandemic we definitely need reserve when things are tough we really need it of course uh when uh there's a bit of lacking in money we can actually go for a loan we can take the risk like how ej did there are different different options but there is also the option of when times are good we can actually start uh building these reserves that mm -hmm. you can use for uh you know trying times or even for to to actually expand your business in the future so i'm uh, looking at you know with my with uh the clients that we have uh we actually try to encourage them to actually build a reserve you start off with a very simple mark, maybe a three months reserve for your next, you know, you have it sufficient for the next three months. Then you build on it. It becomes six months, nine months, one year, two years. Uh, but we will not recommend, you know, very long period because then you get too comfortable. You won't want to actually expand your business because I'm doing fine, you know, and I have my reserve. So let's, let's chill and just do what we normally do and things like that. So there is a certain uh, balance that we need to strike. You have the reserve you still need to work towards your your goals of you know bringing creativity into your business doing new business stream because business has its own cycle you know after a while it's like sort of like there's a plateau where you actually need to actually go to the next level and things like that okay so that part is more on the very individual right uh, each person has a different trigger point so be aware of your trigger point test it out you know when you can uh do pay you know contribute a bit more and see what happens you can spend a little bit more time and less on your business and see what happens you know is, is, is things going well or not and one of the the key thing that my mentor always tell me is that if you leave and your business cannot run without you something is wrong you really need to build a team whereby if you leave your team can actually run the business and they come back to you for you know advice and things like that i think ej is doing that right at the moment right you have actually given up right. the business and things like that so we are actually building towards that but in order to do that we also need to personally have our own reserves right now because if we depend on the business we, we can't so there's a lot of things but giving back in terms of monetary should not be until oh i have enough reserve i have enough for myself i have enough for my business it actually should start from the beginning because i also realized that it's not easy even for me to start I'm not one, I'm not a person who start from young to, to start to give. I'm one person who's always to myself, you know. I stay for myself, I don't contribute to society until I actually met my mentor and that's where I actually started, where I give some money. It's a very small amount, but it's a start. Uh, and he encouraged me to, to actually, uh, you know, work more with the young, uh, listen more to them and, you know, try and build on their ideas and things like that or let them run the program, you know, like I mentioned that we actually had a program. That's why he said it's a combination in the sense that Sunday was saying that, you know, we, we actually, you know, something that, that benefits the society and things like that. You know, accounting is like, you know, it just benefits the business owners and things like that. So what can you benefit the society? You know, you just give money, yes, there's one point. The other one that you notice that when this idea of having a workshop that built on the skills of accountants, they don't know how to do a full set of accounts and we actually uh, help them to build that confidence to actually do a full set of accounts. They have the, uh, um, you know, 
a higher confidence to go out there and gain that promotion or even come out and do something on their own you know and there they can actually benefit the society their own community and things like that okay so in, in a way when i look at it it's like oh it's, it's kind of nice you know that uh, we can actually do something like this and it's very interesting journey uh as we progress in this because every every workshop is a new idea <laughs> we have to crack our head and things like that but it gets interesting you know like yes we need to spend more time but it gets interesting and one of the other thing that you know after the workshop it's not like they they just leave some really come back they are not sure what to do they still come and and consult us and things like that and some we just just you know share our knowledge and experiences and things like that you know even in the beginning like when i first met my mentor you know how we actually built the habit of giving back is actually he says that you know certain startups they just they are just starting out they can't afford to pay a lot of things can you just provide your bookkeeping services you know until they are able to afford it then i say uh okay i still got a bit of time so i use that time to actually uh provide that service while i earn from others that's one second thing i notice is that when when you know when ascendants need a lot of things they, they need your time to do some things and things like that uh i seems to have switched a little bit in a way like when you say you are passionate about certain things you will go all out and do it right not you uh, don't yeah. care how far it is you just go around slang and things like that so when when i you know when when certain things they ask me to do is something that i'm good at you know something that's very minor i feel is like checking grammar checking you know those kind of things but, <laughs> but you know if I, somebody has to do it right and so it, it becomes like is it going to be like a job for me i i feel it's not it becomes like something that i just do naturally after that you know they have something to do okay i, I just you know spend that time or i allocate the time to actually actually do it but sometimes i am really stretched for time i just tell them sorry i can't do this and they will find someone else and things like that but as much as i can i will try to uh, provide that kind of um, um my support in that way lah. Uh, i hope that answers your question <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I think this this session is like so power packed with so many different. Uh, this is like tips and tricks of how what kind of entrepreneur we should be because it's 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 really different to be an entrepreneur that's just focus on you know solely on one thing business 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 growth 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 and things like that but keeping a right balance i think it keeps us sane because we we realize at the end of the day why we are doing this why we are starting this business why we are running this business so thank you so much um i i i want to ask you guys something very um I think it's interesting for me, so I I'm just gonna go ahead and and ask this question because all three of you equally have worked with the young. All uh, throughout this conversation, you have shared about working with somebody who's much younger, uh, building your team. So all three of you in different areas, you have shared about that, and I think. Personally, to me, I think you guys are risk takers because it takes a lot to work with the young because they can be very predictable, unpredictable actually. So I, I just want to ask, uh, when have you, have you all three of you at, at any point of time when you're passing that particular task or the particular role, like EJ, you have even passed your role to someone uh, who is much younger than you and you groom them to take up the position and so on. Same goes to Joyce. You're working with so many youngsters. Sanet, definitely, I'm going to keep you for the last to answer this question. <laughs> but have you at any point of time regretted the decisions of passing a particular role <laughs> or task <laughs> to someone who's much younger than you? Like, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you are about to pass this particular task to someone that's much younger? Joyce, you want to go first? This okay, time. I'll go first. My God, mine is very simple. Uh, <laughs> yes, you have tried passing jobs to or even tasks to someone and then they come back to you and you say, okay, they lack experience. So let me tell them what to do or guide them, you know, what to do next and things like that. Plenty of time. Because even sometimes after I, they have been with me for a while and there's something new coming up, that, that new that came up and you pass them the thing and you come back and say, okay, this is not something that, you know, is common sense or that they can do. Uh, so they still need a bit of guidance. So mm -hmm. you just need to spend the time and yes you need to be patient with them yeah so that's my short and sweet answer <laughs> okay how about ej 
So your, your question again about taking risks? Yeah, so I, I just wanted to find out, it's like when you actually, uh, on your case, you actually pass over the company, the swim school itself to someone else who is much younger, you actually took your time to groom the person as well. So um, what is, uh, like, have you actually like thought to yourself that, oh my God, am I making the right decision here? Or is this going to be a mistake? Have you ever had those kind of thoughts? I think the risk now for me, it gets lower and lower already. Because uh, nowadays, how I spot my leaders is I usually give them a really a small task, like mini tasks. Like for example, uh, Dashi, she's now leading a CEO for our swimming school. I think she started really small, like when we were doing something as simple as a Christmas party. So mm -hmm. I said, can, can you run a Christmas party? Then? And she like up the game for Christmas parties, like to a whole new level. Last time, Christmas parties, just let's sit around, drink alcohol and just get drunk and that's it. You know? Then it becomes like we have Secret Santa. That's the first time I learned about <laughs> Secret Santa. <laughs> then we have games and TV games and the bonding activities. Like, oh, where is all this thing coming from? <laughs> then that's just where little projects like this, that when people are not paid, when people are just doing it out of passion. And that's, that gives me a lot of hint that this person is kind of ready for the next level. So I give them a, a bigger task. And, and not all the time it's successful. There are, there are times that uh, our team members fail as well, and sometimes it can be pretty costly. And I think the, the, the most uh, costly fail will be our uh, admin team, or I mean, our customer service team. Because they are the ones who deal with the, the new customers, especially when they're new, they're selling our program. And if you're not selling pretty well, you, you just lose a few thousand ringgit. And that's why we say, yeah, it's okay, it's just a few thousand ringgit. We, it's just a tuition fee. It's an expensive tuition fee, but at least we, we learn something from it. So I think if we constantly have that uh, buffer for people to fail, we create that, that platform for people to don't feel so bad and failing. Uh, they, they know that it's a part of the process as long as they're learning from it. And for me, so every time when I'm, I'm giving out a task and then I'm taking risks, I'm also learning. Yes, I'm also learning how to be a better teacher. Yes, for me, my philosophy in, in teaching students is if the students cannot get it, then it's the coach's fault. If the students feel that learning swimming is not interesting because the coach is not interesting at all so that means we have to up our game to be more interesting to be more a uh, better trainer to be more clearer in our communications then from from there itself uh we will keep improving ourselves rather than looking at the other person to, to improve and the risk becomes lower and lower as because i escalate the opportunities i escalate the, the risk that's been taken for bigger and bigger projects then from there I, when i start to see a few hints oh this is this person can can bring in sales, this person can bring in, uh, can create good systems, this person can recruit people or can maintain people. So I always look at these three things, people, sales, and systems. So when, when people have this overall skill set, then I feel that they are ready to be entrepreneurs, then I'll give them a chance on a bigger and bigger uh, task. And usually uh, not uh, everybody's that gifted to have all three at the same time. Th those are very, very exceptional. But usually as long as they have two, that is pretty good enough already. So if there's one, we try to build another one, at least one more extra strength for, and, and through all these small, small projects. Uh. And usually all my projects are volu uh, volunteers. So when they run a Chinese New Year carnival, they run sports day, there's, there's no pay. And that's where I really get to see it. are people, uh, how do people perform when they're not paid? Because anybody yeah. can perform paid. Yeah. And when they are not paid and they're doing like their best, you see, like giving their 110%, those are the people that you, you kind of put in your radar and say, hey, if this person is paid, I'm sure he can do a lot more. Right? So this is the, the way I see risk. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. And Sanit, why I wanted to keep you last is because you yourself, you're a young person, you're 21 years old. So how is it like dealing with those who are much younger than you? Uh, do you have like those kind of thoughts as well? <laughs> My God, what am I doing with these youngsters? I think, I think a couple of things. Um, so. As much as uh, essence, if you look at essence's actual story, and, and there's always an actual story and a story that is projected out to the public in that sense, there's a ton of failures that happen, there's a ton of mistakes that happen, there's a lot of people coming and correcting us, people coming and helping us see what we need to do better, um, and all sorts of stuff. And, and and we've like we've had our fair share of being kids who've made those mistakes, who've done a lot of things and it still happens they still obviously every once in a while we, we mess up somewhere and somebody has to come in and 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 save us at times and so on and um now with this with the newer team in 
um, they do they do that. You know, they they, they have that tendency to um, uh, not what is that? Uh, they'll do really well until they have pressure, and then they'll back off. And, and these kind of things do happen in that sense. One good example, which is a very recent example, and I love sharing this, is uh, so recently we took a trip to the US. The four founders of SNS actually took a trip to the United States of America, and um, two things happened. One was we had our new management team running sentence for two whole weeks um, and these are kids who are 18 19 17 years old around there uh, along with our 14 15 16 year old kids who are all busy working on this global game changer summit and other things that's been happening in that sense and everyone's been running there and all and you can see the panic that is happening and the four of us can see it in the us where they're like oh my god are we doing this properly you know can i actually do this or not there's a lot of phone calls there's a lot of tears there's a lot of i don't know whether i'm doing things correctly or not but it's really fun because like we we did that when we first were put into a big project that we first did our first new age learner virtual conference our first um uh, one or two years of essence when we did that we remember i remember doing all of these these things that we did and my mentors coming and telling me hey it's okay you're learning um you know you're, you're still uh that, that that's part and, and parcel of it at the process and i remember what he used to say to us when we first started off in that sense there's never um a, a thing where He's like, you made a mistake. It's more of, okay, think about it, like, like, like work through it, see how it's going to be done in that sense. And it's nice to be able to do that uh, for, for this newer team uh, that's happening right now. But, but, but at the same time, when we were in the US, um, this is us uh, for the first time reaching a new territory that we've never reached before. So it's essentially a sentence in year one, year two, year three, <laughs> but in the US. So, and, and which is which is very very confusing because you know here you are you think you've done this thing for the last five six years or seven years in that sense, but then it's like it's like it's literally I felt the same feeling that I felt the first year when we were doing programs in schools in Malaysia, uh, in, in 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 homeschooling centers and so on. It was the same thing. We were figuring out so much of stuff. We kept thinking, why is it not working well enough? We kept thinking, are we doing this? correct or not uh, is this so much more? so it's the same thing that's happening in malaysia it's a reflection of what's happening there in, in the us as well and i think that's always going to happen like whenever you try something new um it's not about whether you're young or whether you're old it's it's it's, it's like whenever you you start something new that chaos period is going to be there that mistake period is going to be there like what ej mentions to give them that avenue to make the mistakes to fail to to have your banters to have your 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 sad moments in that sense but all of that eventually builds into something all of that eventually builds into um uh, you know building better teams and better uh, infrastructure and so on as well one very interesting thing that happened and i never understood this thing is when my mentor used to always tell me you must let the young lead let the young lead so i was like i'm the young person you know like why would i <laughs> but uh, when our two founders, Madhra and Hira, actually stepped down as CEO and CEO of Ascendance, and me and Hasha got put into CEO and CEO, that's when it actually hit me that you need to let the young lead. Until that, I could never see that 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 is what it meant of letting the young lead. And um, more and more, like I'm beginning to see, uh, me, like me and Hasha's transitioning out period is coming soon. And we need to build that next layer of people who are going to take over assonance and do things. And we move into a more of an advisor role. But it's it's very scary, but it's also very exciting at the same time. I'm like, who's the next person who's going to come and you know build all sorts of crazy ideas and work on things that's probably even more crazy than a 48-hour life summit. Uh, it's very exciting to see where, where, where it's going to go. Yeah, thank you so much, Sarah. I think that wraps up our panel session. Can entrepreneurship change the world? Uh, and and Sarah, I think I'm going to take a little bit of your uh, closing part when you actually say that when even when you went to the US, it seems like you're starting back a little bit from ground zero. And I I, I truly believe that that's actually what entrepreneurship is all about. There's never an end part towards it. There's every single point of time that we are seeing that, oh my God, there's something new to, to venture into. There's something new to explore, uh, even new obstacles and so on. So thank you so much to Sana, Joyce and EJ for keeping it really, really real on what entrepreneurship actually means. And for each and every single one of you, I think you guys are making a huge difference to the world, to the community out there, from 
your own expertise, your own niche of industry that you're working on. So thank you so much for being in this panel session. And uh, I would say that's it. So we're going to pass it back to the MCs. And thank you for joining us for all three of you. Thank you. Thank you for having us.